Hello, hello. Welcome everyone to the dolphin tank. You are all honorary dolphins for the next hour, so get your dolphin's hat on. My name is Anna Kansani. I'm head of community at Goodwater Capital. We are a consumer tech VC based in the Bay Area. Um, prior to Goodwater, I ran the dolphin tank for seven years at Springboard, ran community, um, and this organization, and FQ, has been very near and dear to my heart. So thank you all for joining, and thank you again for uh, FQ for hosting us. Uh, Springboard is a global organization for women entrepreneurs focusing on technology and life science companies. We've worked with over 800 companies, many of which have raised uh, capital, gone public, um, and we continue to support high growth women entrepreneurs. So if you want to get connected, um, we have programs running throughout the year. We do these dolphin tanks in different cities. So please reach out to us. You can also scan. There'll be a QR code um, to learn more. We've done these dolphin tanks for over 10 years now with the goal of really support. So it's not so much, uh, we are not sharks today, we are dolphins. So it is, it, we have companies of all different stages and that is what I love about this program. And it, it doesn't matter what stage you're at or how much you've raised, it matters where you're at now and where you're looking to go and how we can support you getting there through questions, through connections. So we'll be looking to the panel for their questions and support. We'll also be looking out to you, like I said, honorary dolphins. So if you have connections you can make or suggestions for our companies, that's super helpful. Um, and I'll be calling on you all to participate. Um, with that, we'll give the panel just a really brief one-liner uh, intros, and then we'll get started. One line. Or one or two. <laughs> <laughs> so, so many things. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm going to try one more time. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> yes, energy. My name is Neko Pai. I'm the head of financial innovation at a tech company called Better. First fintech to cross $100 billion in funded volume. So probably the biggest fintech you, you've never heard of. <laughs> um, I design and prototype financial technology products there. And when I'm not doing that, I'm an avid angel investor. I've invested my own capital in about 40 startups. And along with my two law school roommates, we have collectively um, syndicated and invested about $100 million into 300 startups. Yes. Woo! Hi, I'm Carrie Rupp from Austin, Texas, and I have a venture capital fund with my partner Sarah called True Wealth Ventures. We invest specifically in women-led companies that are improving either human or environmental health. At the seed stage, we have a portfolio of 17 companies thus far, and I'm always looking, so that's, um, if you're in those sectors, find me after the event. I'm in hot pink, so you can find me, uh, but excited to meet the companies today. <laughs> I'm Arlen. I'm Arlen Hamilton. I am the founder and managing partner of Backstage Capital. We invest in people who are underestimated. So women, BIPOC, and LGBTQ+. We've invested in more than 200 of those companies since 2015. And I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, I'm Shelly Zales, CEO of the Female Quotient. And I have to just say that underestimated, it is, we are just not visible enough because we are so estimated when we show, showcase who we are and what we do because actually female owned businesses outperform male owned businesses every single time. We just don't talk about it enough, right? So it's all about storytelling and that's just really what it's all about. And we also aren't telling the right stories. So I want us to start writing the right stories because when we keep sharing the numbers that VC only invest 2% in women and less than 1% in um, black-owned businesses or in diverse-owned businesses or whatever we're going to call them. BIPOC. Women of, or BIPOC. BIPOC is a good term. Okay, BIPOC. Except that, that doesn't even divide it up because that's like non-white. And I want to say black-owned, brown-owned, you know, Indian. Like, let's break it up because we should showcase, you know, what's what. Because that's kind of not even telling the right story because when you say 2% or less than 1%, right, it takes away the confidence in women when you show those numbers. So I actually called PitchBook trying to find these numbers because when you say, well, what about minority um, VCs? Mm -hmm. What percentage? Mm -hmm. That doesn't even exist. You can't, even, not. you can't get that data because if you actually looked at minority-owned VCs, I bet the number would be like 30% investing in women and women of color or BIPOC, right? You can't get that data. 
And so the question really is, well then, if women outperform men, then the problem is at the VCs, because 90-something percent of VCs are men. Well, let's get that data together. I'm trying, I'm trying, let's do. So that's the story. We're telling the wrong story. Women are badass founders, period. And that is why I love Dolphin Tank, where we showcase the best of the best. So you are in for a real treat. That's all I want to say. Let's get the party started. <laughs> all right. And with that, I will invite up our first founder, Evelyn Mora. Woo! Woo! Hello, everyone. I'm Evelyn Mora, founder of Village. Well, 10 years ago, I founded Helsinki Fashion Week, which became the world's most sustainable fashion week. The first one as well. Seven years later, I founded the world's first 3D Fashion Week, and we hosted over half a million people during five days. I saw the potential of virtual storytelling and how we have to essentially enable SMEs to access tools for marketing and growing their businesses. Hence, I founded Village, and Village is a uh, a software that enables users to build hyper-personalized, gamified virtual worlds in minutes. Um, we founded the company two years ago. We are about 20 people today, and we raised over $4 million, and now I'm doing my sec well, third round, and I'm in kind of un uncanny valley between seed and A. And ultimately, last year, we got our software ready, and we did over a million dollars in revenue, and we're looking to double that this year. Yes. <laughs> Great. Great. Awesome. <laughs> Love it. Short and sweet. Um, great, so we'll launch right into questions. Just want to point out, I think leading, uh, founders ask, you know, in a very short pitch, where do you put your credibility, your experience? I think starting, you know, I founded this and it turned into this, I founded this and it turned out, it set credibility right away. So I think um, that was a really great way to start off the pitch. Just want to throw that out there. Um, Carrie, why don't we start with you? What stood out uh, as something that she did really well or something you want to learn more about? Yeah, I felt like you had a lot of confidence about what you're doing. It felt good that you like explained that you've already raised two rounds of funding and you're looking for the next. I still actually, unfortunately, though, don't know what it is that you do. I understand that it's software, and I think I heard that it's bringing worlds together, but I couldn't tell if it was taking what you had done with you know, the fashion week and actually making it a virtual opportunity or who the customer was, that kind of thing. So I felt like maybe there wasn't enough on the actual like, opportunity that's available today. And why don't you follow on? Yeah, give us a little bit more info on like, what the product is and who buys it. So today we're B2B. We're selling to larger fashion brands in the world like Lancome, L'Oreal, and such. Um, and we are essentially now selling to SMEs, so smaller fashion brands. Um, so the tool, so today, on average, in America, we spend like 40% of our awake time online. So we are spending a lot of time online, and essentially, I took presentation and storytelling from physical space into digital space. So what the software does, it enables you to essentially envision a space and what you want to communicate, what kind of activities you want to essentially create in a virtual space, and it enables essentially you to create it in a few minutes. So Roblox, I'm sure you're familiar with that, is essentially they're hosting over 70 million daily active users on their platforms. So consumers are spending more time in spaces where they can interact, socialize, and approach these like things like entertainment, commerce, in new ways. So brands are looking to act access these new spaces because essentially retail, um, you know, Saks Fifth, Fifth Avenue is empty, and a lot of the traffic that goes to net porte essentially doesn't translate so much into um, checkouts, right, Com compared to how many people go to the website. So what we are doing, we enable you to have very accessible pricing points and tools to essentially execute that virtual space for your activities. Got it. Great. Would Arlen? Would this, uh, no, the mic's not. Would this be on the, the company's website? Is this sort of like their, the pop-up shop on the website so you can see it in, in 3D? Or is it part of a metaverse that's sort of separate and it's a marketplace? So you can think of us like as a Squarespace almost, but for 3D worlds, right? Squarespace. Right. Yes. So ultimately, um, you come on to browser, uh, you subscribe to our tool, you build your world, and then it's accessible on mobile, desktop, 
even Apple Vision Pro. Yes. So ultimately, it's a white label tool, right? Like I a Photoshop, right? I would absolutely start with that. Like start <laughs> with your receipts and what you've done, and then that first two minutes that you said, say we are a, a Squarespace for, because that makes it so much clearer. And and we could have spent more time asking you about numbers and all sorts of things, and and gotten even more impressed by you <laughs> if we had that time. Yeah, and you also said that it was your first. Yeah, I've done a lot of first because my career is really about accessibility. I wanted to work in uh, fashion, and Fashion Week, it didn't exist, so I created it. Then um, I saw that smaller brands don't have capital to throw fashion shows in Le Louvre or under the Eiffel Tower. So I wanted to give them those tools that they can reimagine these spaces to, to get access to the, that same type of content without having to spend millions. So everything I do is really about accessibility and that translates into the software, which is no code, so you don't need any technical literacy to get in there and build hyper-personalized and high-fidelity worlds. So I think that's super important. Like, if you gave a case study, I think that'd be really interesting. Just like even, I think you could do it in 20 seconds. Like, um, uh, you say the brand, they want to create a uh, fashion show underneath the Eiffel Tower. Now their users can see what their clothes look like. At, you know, so create the image for us, I think would be really helpful. That sounds super cool. <laughs> like, yeah. really, really cool. And also being the first is great, but being the first and and having the differentiation because there are today a lot of, um, you know, Web3 concepts that are doing fashion shows in Web3. So because you were the first, that's great. But how are you leveraging being the first and the, the different? What's your differentiation as well? So I would just say that I'm a very visual person and there is a lot of things that is happening in Web3, especially in fashion. But I would say that what we've created is very beautiful and it hasn't been beaten yet. Mm. So ultimately we create something that's accessible and beautiful and in fashion ultimately what we buy into is it's kind of a balance between the beauty of things but also uh, the story. So for me when you buy a t-shirt for $500 you buy into the story of that creative director giving you essentially making the brand story part of your kind of self-expression if that makes sense. So we are first to market. There is tools similar to us but, but ultimately what I feel that we have is that full 360 understanding of the, what the industry needs and what are the bottlenecks today and how we can solve it with technology. Great, what is your ask for us or the audience? So I'm looking, so I feel that money is easy to find, right? I'm looking for right type of investors. So I'm looking for investors that have a vast um, experience in retail and are looking to reshape it. Um, and I'm currently in process of doing my $3 million round. Um, voila, so that's basically what I'm asking. <laughs> okay. Right um, people, basically. Great, Any, uh, anyone on the panel can I put their hand I up I actually to wanna add a new twist yeah. to <laughs> Dolphin Tank also. <laughs> I've decided I wanna ask a new twist, which is of the audience, I wanna ask the audience. Oh yeah, we're going there next. Okay, good, yeah, yeah. because I've been watching the game shows. So I wanna do, <laughs> I want to make sure we do ask the audience. Well, yeah, I just want to see. I want to see this. if any of okay, the panel good. had a uh, kid raise their hand to make any connections, and then uh, yeah, I'll just say that there is a Dallas-based fund focused specifically on retail tech, so changing the face of retail, and I can make an introduction there. So if you find me afterwards, I can help make that intro. Thank you. Fantastic. Are uh, you in, are you invested in by unconventional ventures in uh, in the Nordics, Taya and Nora? No. So I'm an LP in their I'm their first LP in their fund, and they invest in women, sustainability, et cetera, and they have the, the largest seed fund for that in the Nordics, and I'd be happy to make that introduction. Thank you. Great. And yeah, we can take either a couple of questions, or if anyone's in this space, fashion, AI, um, any questions out there, or yeah. Cool. I, I don't know if we have time for you to answer it, but great feedback just to give a case study on like a... I'll just make it very yeah. short. So just go to vlge.com and then scroll like 
one second and enter the experience. You'll actually enter into a digital Louvre. So the Museum of Louvre digitized and gamified for the first time with uh, Lancôme, who collaborated on their latest collection, which was inspired by amazing female goddesses. So there is also a Louvre tour to check it out. Nice. Anyone else in the fashion or AI space? But, but uh, my oh, yeah. question was a little different. Sure. I want to twist the question. Okay. I want to just, and this is how we all grow and learn together. So if you had money to invest, I want a raise of hands, who would make this investment? From everything you know, just raise your hand. If you had funding to invest oh, in a business, it? or who would take the meeting? Because my offer to you is going to be to help you with your pitch deck and to train. So that's how I can contribute. So that's my contribution. But I want to see from Ask the Audience. So this is an Ask the Audience, because this is how I will know how to help you. So from, and this is what we do. This is women Can I just say women. before they answer? Yeah. So like um, virtual know. goods, virtual goods and direct to avatar market is going to be $700 billion by 2028. And creator economy is going to reach a trillion dollars by 2030. Just saying. And I love also that. something you should include in your pitch. See, all these pieces I love because this is how I want to add twists to everything yeah. you do. Yeah. So from everything you've heard today, right now, because elevator pitches are very important. So A, who would take the meeting? Let's start with that. Raise your hand. Okay, so the round is closed. <laughs> They okay, would great. take the meeting, and then they yeah. would take the meeting, and then it would be up to you to close. Okay, and then yeah. next question. Oh, that was the question. No, and then question two. Who would invest right away, based, based, on, based, based on, on what you heard? So that's really good to know. Note for you is how much you're converting in just a few. Because it's a very long elevator pitch, just a long ride, but. Th that is really good data for you to understand. There are a lot of people who are intrigued, and it's not so much a kind of a answer back, but it's there are a lot of people who are intrigued, and it would be up to you and anyone else who's pitching to survey the audience afterwards. You know, we're going to do the same thing each time, but to survey what could I have said that would have gotten your interest a little bit earlier? What what did I need to leave out? You know, and that kind of information in real time is invaluable. Yeah, great. All right, thank you so much, thank everyone. You. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Good job. And next up, we have Jerry with Angelique, I think. Oh, just kidding. Sorry, it was different on the paper. Ariane, yep, come on up. Woo. Woo. Love the fit, love the fit. Good to see you. Literally a period drip today. <laughs> All right, so judges, I'm Ariane Long, and I'm the founder and chief estrogen officer at Femly. Yes. <laughs> at 26 years old, I was diagnosed with a tumor linked directly to chemicals in period care. And this was at a time where I didn't even know it was called period poverty. I ended up spending days on life support, losing a daughter to stillbirth, and finding out that 80% of us, whether you can or can't afford these products, go without in public restrooms. Because of this, the US has passed more than 63 laws requiring free pads and tampons in restrooms at schools and government buildings, but the vast majority of organizations are non-compliant. When I couldn't find a simple solution to this problem, I decided to do something about it, period. <laughs> <laughs> and I created, <laughs> I created the first smart touchless hygiene dispenser that uses AI and inclusive sensors to support consumers and janitorial teams. Raise your hand if you've walked into a public bath bathroom and have seen a super ugly, non-efficient stainless steel dispenser. And we all know that they are usually not stocked and the experience leaves you to question if you can even afford them because they are coin operated. <laughs> Laws state that because you cannot charge students, those machines come out, and we want to be the company that replaces them. Family right now is the only black woman-led company in the US leveraging minority and women certification to meet demand. This sensor not only offers side view windows for inventory management, we have braille for people who are vision impaired. Sensors that unlike public faucets work for black and brown skin. Yeah. <laughs> 
and our pads and tampons are sustainable and also manufactured by us. How we make money is selling this device along with four other patent pending products, along with one to 10 year subscriptions on the product themselves. We are single-handedly ensuring that no one lacks access, whether they can or can't afford. And because of this, we are now meeting demand of a $500 billion, super stale, old guy dominated industry. <laughs> So my ask for you in the Dolphin Tank is for access to capital. I am a founder that had to scrape my way to traction. When I could not get venture funding, I won 52 pitch competitions in five to 20K increments and $1.2 million non-dilutive. My competitors are gorgeous women and they are way more funded than we are, but we have the demand. A viral you TikTok. You are gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But a viral TikTok led to more than 3,000 companies seeking our products. So we need funding. And for anyone in the audience, we would love introductions to your alma mater, your workplace, and any other organization where you think family should be. And you can scan the code to email our ops manager. Really quick, who is the decision maker at that um, university or brand or store or whoever that um, people should be thinking about? It is often the dean of students. But if you know anyone in administration, they're usually happy to advocate and be champions on our behalf. And at a, sto at a retail store? Or At a retail store, it's generally the general manager. Okay. If it's a franchise, it's the regional or a manager. Same thing. Okay, yeah. great. Just wanted to Ooh. throw that out there. I have, I have certainly have questions. Yeah, can I, we can start with you. It's so impressive, obviously. And I feel like we met on the staircase uh, somewhere in Boston. I was pregnant. That was the daughter I lost. I was pregnant when I first met you. At the, Hello Alice the, Circular Summit. That's exactly what it. Yeah, I remember walking, seeing you walk up the stairs. Ooh, these and lashes I, are holding on. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that, and I, I remember probably again at BeautyCon, we spoke again. Um, it's so impressive, and um, I wonder with, you said that 3,000 companies reached out, and then the next sentence was, we need funding. What does the funding do that the 3,000 leads that people would kill for, what, what yeah. does that do that that didn't do? So for the customers who we were able to pre-sell to, we did. We were picked as the feminine care provider for Fulton County, Georgia, 109 schools. We have University of South Florida, St. John's. Yes. But there's a considerable portion of the pipeline that because of their procurement policy, can't pre-order. Can't pre-order, okay. So they what literally what, need it within what 30 the, what's days. What's the price point? And, and so our dispensers start at just $625, yes. and they can go all the way down to $50. We have a mini dispenser that sits on the stall next to the toilet paper. Is there, I know this is a little left field, but sure. is there a way to kind of turn this into a vending machine type of situation? You know how so many solopreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs want to have vending machines and laundromats and things like that? Is there a way to kind of tap into that as well? It could be a possibility, but because of the period equity laws, we want to ride um, the wave of yeah. legislation yeah. and supplier procurement demand. Yeah. So with so, how much you've you've raised 1.2 million in pitch competitions, yeah. and that is the takeaway for anybody here, please. But how how much uh, revenue have you done? We've done more than a million. Well, the first million, I was the only employee, and our goal this year is five million in rev and profitability. Uh, how much are you raising? A 1.5 million extension. We just closed 650,000 from Pharrell, Beyonce, yeah. the state of Maryland, and Google's Black Founders Fund. So, so how much of it is raised, did you say? How much of it 650 is 650 off of the 1.5. 650, okay. 850 left. All right, all right. I think this, this panel has eight. I, I'm happy. Has eight Badass eight. women. So first, first of all, that was an amazing pitch. I Thank have to you. say, like A plus plus. Um, so I think I have pretty good connections for you with government, and I want to talk about procurement because I'm actually working on procurement right now. Where less than five percent. This is crazy numbers. Less than five percent of procurement dollars from Fortune 500 goes to right. women-owned businesses, which is five percent, ninety-five percent legacy. That's all it is. So I don't get that. So we're going to talk about Fortune 500. Um, because procurement's a big deal, yeah. and 
I have access to certification. It's so easy. You got And I have it. I have both. I have NMSDC and WeBank. Done, done, and done. Done, okay. done, and done. So that's easy. I had so. to prove I was black, but we did it. <laughs> <laughs> that was really hard. <laughs> okay, so already a good start. So that's easy. So we'll bring you into Fortune 500. So that's great. Secondly, government funding. Mayors and governors. Yep. So. Yeah, counties and. Uh, so we have, have access have we talked to those. Have to you that talked to too. like the counties in different states? Yeah, we're starting to now. We actually have our foreign entity designation in quite a few different territories. Um, okay. One, it helps us get in on the ground there, and two, it allows us to have access to those budgets. But we were awarded two hundred and fifty thousand from Maryland Tedco through Westmore, yeah. Governor you Westmore. Find a way to, to create jobs in those cities. Yep. Th these counties have billions. We of want dollars. like Avon for vaginas, and we want to do what Georgia Pacific did for the hair dryer. Yeah. Love it. Oh, that's great. <laughs> okay, I want to. So, oh, yeah, sorry. we should discuss that because we have some good governors for you. And we have some good, a lot of good mayors for you, and awesome. that's access to schools. So, yes. the dean. That's fine, but the hey, governor well. and the mayor will be finer. Great. I want to get <laughs> Neka your thoughts. Yeah. So um, first and foremost, I'm so inspired by you. I'm so inspired by you. And as a black woman who scraped uh, to raise my first million, I know how hard that is. You were able to do it with non-dilutive capital. Kudos to you. And I want to commend you for having the courage to show up and show out in a space and in a venture ecosystem that doesn't always value the contributions of people who look like us. And I wanna go you back to Shelly's earlier point. We know that the percentage of venture dollars that go to women, we know that it's abysmal, but when we dig into intersectionality, we do have that data. We know just last year of the 136 billion venture dollars that went into startups, Less than 700 million of that went to black founded companies. That's less than a half of 1%. Yeah. Right? And that's men and women. Yeah. So, to put a finer point on it, when you're in an ecosystem, in a socio political climate where those funders who are doubling down and committing to supporting black led businesses are being served with lawsuits for discrimination, it can have a chilling effect on innovation. And it takes the courage of people like you to continue to create anyways, and the courage of people like us to continue to cut the check anyways. <laughs> and so I'm so I'm in awe of this space. Thank Shelly, you. Kay, wherever you are, thank you so much Kay, for creating Kay, this Kay. space. <laughs> Kay, 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 Kay. I cannot wait to see what you do. Um, count me in. I normally only invest in software, but honey, I'm sold. I, you're yeah. an icon. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Could, have, awesome. you, have you done a Reg CF? No. Okay, listen. Uh, can I Say I'm, what that is. So, I'm, Regulation Crowdfund is a crowdfund for equity, right? Uh, in March of 2021, I was the first black person to raise $5 million using Reg CF, and then we've gone on, the second was one of our portfolio companies, Curl Mix, yes, who's raising right Kim now, by well. the way, right? So why haven't you done that? To me, you put your story, this brand, in front of the, the masses, and you've raised your, your 850K in a day. Yeah. Is there a reason you haven't done that? So the feedback that I've gotten from investors is that the people who go that route did so because they weren't able to the, raise Those investors invested. Don't listen that, to that, them. They invest in you. Listen to they want your, they they want your equity. Did they invest in yeah. you. Did right. those investors invest in you? Absolutely not. So the, who cares what they have exactly. to say? Exactly. Don't listen. I am so serious. I'm, you're, right. you're talking to someone who is, right. I raised one million in one day and five million in eight days. And Kim just raised again. Okay. Yeah. And she just raised a million dollars, right? You can chat with her. We right. can we can set you up that in 30 to 45 days you have a uh, campaign going and i don't say this to everybody because not everybody could do, do that it. right yeah. but you would have a campaign live anyone across the country and in some places across the world could invest as little as 100 dollars and own a piece of your company and then they become instant fans and, and promoters of what you do so everyone let's follow her on social so that when she announces this campaign we can all let me tell you one more thing fq has the largest global community of women in business we have over three million women in 100 countries we will put you on social. 
Thank you. And, and one last thing, I have an intro for you as well. Have you thought about large property managers? I'm thinking of a woman, um, Martha Ekpo. She's the, uh, the director of business operations for HSBC's global commercial real estate um, platform. And I, I believe that she would love this. And when you touch someone like that, you're touching tens of thousands of right. properties instead of going company by company. And, and yes, throwing we into have, that, that JLL yeah. is actually doing a sustainability initiative too they for all of their in buildings. They invested our competitor who oh, raised no. 30 million. Uh, I, I bet, uh -oh. I bet they would invest in you, you as heard well. It here. Right. I think so. Yeah, yeah. And so I think we have the connection for you for JLL okay. to at least Correct. get into okay. that. A lot channel. of love. You got a lot of love. Thank you. All right. So ask the question. Ask the question. No, we're gonna ask the question. So who in the room would take a first meeting? <laughs> and who, if you had, well, I don't know. Crowdfund. If 50K, you were doing the crowdfund today, yeah. would you invest in that crowdfund today? Woo! There you go. Thank you your money. You are going to be the next black person and human to raise five million on a reg CF. There we I'm go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen. And by the all way, right. we'll put them in our lounges all over the world. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. All right, next up we have Jerry with Angel Inc. Yes. Woo! Oh my goodness, well. It's kind of a good transition, um, actually. This is gonna be very difficult to go after <laughs> you, honey. Oh my gosh. Um, anyway. Oh yeah, okay, so we got the red You're energy going. You're okay. Wow, well, you did fantastic, honey, and congratulations. We all loved it. So my name is Gary Poyer. I'm CEO and founder of Angel Link. Angel Link is the world's first crowdfunding platform built and powered by women. Well, you can't make this shit up. No, nice segue. <laughs> so Lovely we got to talk. So um, I have 20 years experience in finance in, on Wall Street, worked for a, a large investment bank. And I have been the only woman in the room for over two decades. And in a male-dominated industry, I really saw a tremendous problem with uh, female inequality across the entire economic spectrum. And I was like, damn it, I want to do something about it. So um, women are underserved, as we all know. We make 20% less than men for doing the same work. We get less than 2% venture capital. And what's, what's, so, what's not surprising is that women are turning to crowdfunding. We're turning to crowdfunding not just to run our business because our son has cancer, because our mother has Alzheimer's, and because we're living 75% of us paycheck to paycheck. This is the American reality. Just look abroad, it's even worse. So um, I built a company to really help. It's called Angel Link. It's crowdfunding powered by women. You guys might know Bumble in dating. This is the Bumble of crowdfunding. So if she can actually talk to women and in a, in a dating environment, we're talking to women in a crowdfunding environment for the things that matter most in your life. It's medical, it's memorial, it's emergencies. Um, and, and, and in addition, we're doing women donation-based crowdfunding for your first money in to start a business. For small businesses that will never get venture capital. What if you wanna start a bakery, right? What are you gonna do? If you don't have a rich uncle, good luck raising money. But you can come to AngelLink and raise from friends, family, your community with our social uh, integration and deep links into Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, WhatsApp, YouTube, et cetera. You can, get, you can build that community and you can actually share your story and get the money you need to start small businesses, which is basically the largest uh, you know, uh, employer in the United States for small businesses. So I wanna tell you about a contract we just signed with the SBA, I'll tell you about that later. But uh, so I built the company, uh, it works. I've raised $7.3 million. I did not go, unfortunately, it was dilutive, but you do what you can, you do. Um, but anyway, so we raised 7.3 million, uh, some very smart men. I'd love to have more women investors, only have one, all the other investors are men. They're very smart, they're payment guys, they know what we're doing and they're international. But anyway, so we built the company, it works. We have um, done about three and a half million of transactions. We have 60,000 users in our first year and a half. And um, so uh, I'm kind of way off my pitch. <laughs> really? Okay, so I built an amazing team. Uh, our CTO has a PhD in artificial intelligence. 
Our CFO came from the largest payment company in the world, and we hired three people from our competitor. Um, so our technology is patent pending. We have filed for eight patent claims, and we have a technology that is AI driven with image recognition for anti-fraud, uh, making it the safest, securest, and best product out there. We also have embedded AI in terms of uh, uh, to make the platform faster, better, and safer for our uh, users. Um, and we're just getting started. And the milestone I'm most proud of, we won the Mindshare Award. We also were just nominated for the top three awards in crowdfunding uh, for the best crowdfunding platform, best fintech, and best marketplace by Crowdsourcing Week. And uh, we just heard yesterday we're a top finalist. So um, anyway, so that's a little bit about us. Um, but it's not really about us. It's about the things we do. Uh, we helped Mary raise $7,000 to fight her breast cancer. We helped John raise over $100,000 for the uh, Turkish earthquake. We helped um, John, another John, raise money to, because his dog had cancer. So, and we just signed a deal, I'm sorry, we just signed a deal with the American Women's Business Association um, to actually do, uh, help them with crowdfunding. They have 100,000 women every year who, number one, need funding, and they have education and training, but they don't have the capital. So we're uh, launching a program with AngelLink, with the American Women's Business Association. They have 150 locations around the United States, and we signed that yesterday. So anyway, that's a little bit about Angel Link. Um, okay, really quick. You're not a nonprofit, correct? No, we are not. So We're a for-profit company. I wanted to say, I yep. think really important, and I, I think sh sharing impact, sharing about the product, sharing about your reach is super important. If it's an investor pitch, we want to know how your company is doing, how much money you've made, what's a business opportunity to keep investing. So can you give like a 20 second on where you're at stage-wise? This industry wise? is incredibly profitable and nobody knows how profitable it is. It's run by GoFundMe as the largest competitor. They've done 30 billion. It's expected to go to grow to 300 billion in the next few years. It is incredibly profitable. That's why we've raised $7.3 million. 71% um, gross margins, a, a whopping 41% EBITDA margins. People should be standing in line to invest in AngelLink. It's a technology. It can help you with the things in life that matter most. It is, you know, when you think about it, we actually do have a charity. Not only did we have to build a company, but we did have to build a charity, a 501c3 called the AngelLink Community Foundation. So we are a for-profit company, Great. making an incredibly good return for investors, but Great. we do well by doing good. Great. Can I Carrie. jump in? Yeah. So uh, we found that the best way to make an impact on the abysmal numbers, you know, funding underrepresented founders, was to bring underrepresented LPs to the table to invest. So there's no one who, you know, agrees more that we get, need women funding women, you know, we need more diverse um, funders. But I'm not totally clear how you're actually leveraging that differentiation. So you talked about two Johns who did something philanthropic on your platform, but how are you reaching a diverse audience of funders to get the people on your platform the funding? What are you doing differently there? And I've heard of other you know, crowdfunding platforms that have you know, different niches, and I didn't hear what you're doing to reach that niche. So we are leading with technology and a community. Number one, making our technology the safest platform in the industry because our competitor has a D rating and has had some serious problems with... Uh, Do the consumers so, know that? Um, well, you can just look on Trustpilot and you can look at others, but, but there if, is... But if I were about to go invest in you know, <laughs> one of the businesses here today, I don't think I would first go to Trustpilot. I'd think, oh, where are they raising? I want to go raise on that platform. Yeah. So I just want to be clear like what the mm -hmm. differentiation is to the person who's looking for cool deals. So I think that's an, an, an incredibly good point. And what we're doing is building that really caring, empathetic, female-focused platform because we are 70% of the organizers are women. 75% of the donors are women. And we're raising two times more than men on peer-to-peer on -peer crowdfunding. So it's kind of a little bit like Bumble did in terms of you know creating that ecosystem that that uh, communication through social media, through Instagram and Facebook, to really build a female-centric, caring community, um, and also making it as, as fast and as easy and as um, modern and, and uh, to give you free tools to actually be successful. 
And so the free tools to make it more successful, the AI driven. So we can actually embed an AI because our CTO has a PhD in artificial intelligence. Her name is Sheila. And she embedded AI in order to create a, a user story very quickly. You can put in my dog has cancer and his name is Sam. And you can, and our AI wizard, click a button and up comes this beautiful story if you want to use AI to enhance your story. Because a lot of people need help and it's, uh, we want to help our community be as successful as possible. So user friendly. User yes. Friendly. Arlen, yes. Oh, what's the take rate? Like you did 1.5 million. What percentage do you charge? To, to make your to make we your did three point five million. Oh, three point five. Yeah. So sorry. that's that's like you know the GMV. Or so we're making about well, it's forty one percent EBITDA margin. No, so what, what I'm, I'm I guess I'm misunderstanding. Did you do three point five million worth of transactions, or did you make three? No, no, three point five millions of transactions. Okay. So wh how much do you charge on that? So the so it's uh, basically credit card processing fee payment. Yes. Yes. It's three point five. It's uh, two point nine percent plus thirty cents a transaction. So it's yeah. about three percent. The organizer pays. Okay. And then the um, donor is paying a gratuity, and I, the the gratuity uh -oh. is is averaging about uh, seven to eight percent. Does that go to you? Yes. The, the gratuity the goes to us for our free platform. So the it's gratuity? a free. It's identical. Oh, I see what it's you're identical Just model to GoFundMe. Okay. So then uh, you said that was seven percent because I stepped on that a little bit. You said it was seven. What's so in on average, our take rate is about ten percent. Oh, ten percent. Yeah. Okay. So you've made about three hundred and fifty k. Yes. In a year and a half. Yes. That's the one point five that I was hearing. The That's year correct. and a half. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's do the ask the audience. Let Let me just see. Oh. Nika, do you have any? Uh, questions? I, I, really I love, love, the, love the platform. I, I think that leveraging community is so smart when it comes to investments. Um, even me, when I'm angel investing, my checks are not huge, but I'm bringing a hundred to 500 people with me, and we're going to take up one line on your on your cap table. So I think it's really um, smart to democratize access in that way for everyday people. Um, and going back to Arlen's earlier point, um, you doing it in this way that's very similar to GoFundMe, but you're angling to be more of a trusted um, version of it. I think all of us have probably heard stories about um, things happening on GoFundMe, there being fraud, et cetera, on the platform. I do think that there's an opportunity there for you to grow it. Um, I would love uh, a, a more succinct uh, pitch, one that only hits on the, the high points that the investors care about, um, as opposed to the pitch that would go to the consumers who you would be onboarding as customers uh, for customer acquisition purposes. And that's my only teeny piece of feedback. Great feedback. Thank you. Thank I you. love the name, though. Angel Link. I, I love the name. I think it's a great name. C can Thank I say, you. too, uh, <laughs> you use that privilege because if you raise 7.4, 7.3 million from mostly men, harness that whatever power that is that you have, <laughs> white lady power. Um, <laughs> I'm being serious. Like, use it and somehow find a way to like involve others who are your customers or who are, I don't know exactly who you, off top of, the mi of mine, but there's something that there's something special about being able to raise that amount of money with your background. And I, I'm being kind of silly with the white lady thing, but it's your background. It's the 20 years on Wall Street, I would imagine that people, it kind of reminds me of like an Ella Vest vibe. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like the, uh, Sally with, with her background, she's able to galvanize all these Fortune 100 uh, companies at these huge banks and wealth managers. I feel like that's something you could do to make this even more like the 10x the amount that's going through. Well, uh, thank you for that. <laughs> um, and yes, we are looking to use our foundation um, and you know target women because why wouldn't you target your largest market if we're 70% of the users? And I think it is an opportunity. We are number two, uh, which I think is actually a good space versus number one. Sometimes you, you know you can sort of see what mistakes are, but it's a great opportunity. I mean, it's a seven, it's growing 17% compound in annual growth rate. There's plenty of room for number two. If they're Citibank, you know we can be Bank America, right? So we, we do the same thing. Gary, we do but have to wrap. I'm sorry yeah. to cut you so off. So well let's get our vote. Who would take the first meeting with Angel Angelink? Perfect. And who Thank would invest you. today? Sight unseen. 
Okay. A couple people in the cool. back. Cool. So I think I think the big takeaway is like work on that succinct um, elevator pitch, especially there's going to be different pitches per audience, and yeah. especially pitching to investors, making sure we know your business case, how much rev total, how much is your take rate, um, so that we know that potential. Yeah, and then like the use your sharking it. Use the fact that you were on Wall Street for 20 years to make it even less about the heart and soul of it right, and right. more about the it's a shark it's a business opportunity yeah, yeah. Come yeah. In, that, okay. that would have been really really strong and i think you could do that overnight Fantastic. okay great. great well thank you guys and thank you very much for your feedback and next up last up brianna with that <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm going to start off with a quick question. Who here has been personally victimized by student loan debt? OK. How about debt of any other kind? Oh, yeah. Including the IRS? OK. I'm not here. I don't see that to embarrass anybody, but to just kick off and hopefully resonate what I'm about to share with you all. So my name is Bree Franklin, and I am the founder and CEO of an app called Cadet Prosperet, which is closing the knowledge gap that turns debt from a tool to a trap for teenagers. This is an issue that I grew to have a lot of personal connection and resonance with through my time at Dartmouth College, where I racked up $123,609 and zero common sense. <laughs> <laughs> And the crazy thing is, that was actually after two years of compounding interest. My principal coming out of school was 100 grand even. But because I came from a family that did not teach generational wealth, that did not give me direct access to financial education, and daggone sure did not know the difference between fixed versus variable interest rate or anything else of the sort, I walked into a tremendous debt pile that sent me so far behind the curve to the tune of my credit dropping to a 520 after two months of missed payments. So this is an issue that I take very personally and because I see the ways in which our youth are being set up for the same failure, I decided to step in and take action that a lot of people just didn't think was possible. So the product that I've created is actually an extension of the nonprofit work that I started doing in 2020 through the Prosperity Project which is where we helped real-life prosperettes that constrain black women with a college education pay down their student loan burden while also training them on financial and career readiness so that way they have the tools to be able to accrue and pass down generational wealth. Mm -hmm. So through this game, we're basically taking action that a lot of people just resigned, could not be, there's nothing that anyone could do about it. I beg to differ, and so that's why I'm so proud that this is actually my first pitch opportunity to share with you <laughs> how we are leading the crusade to conquer predatory lending and debt constraint once and for all. Wow. So I have to tell you, I was like super engaged in your story. I found myself like literally like staring and nodding. Um, and so that's awesome. Thank you. But I don't actually know what you do. Okay, so this is a simulation tool uh, that basically gamifies everyday scenarios that teenagers will eventually find themselves in as they are navigating finance. So credit card offers, those sharky buy now, pay later schemes that we're seeing a lot of people get caught up in, student debt, of course. So it's basically cloning reality and putting it into a gamified version because as of right now, the only way to know how these things will affect your credit score or financial credit worthiness, what have you, is FAFO. If you don't know what that is, ask your neighbor. <laughs> So this is basically putting that tool in their hands so that they can learn it the hard way through the digitized version of themselves and the avatar and then avoid that the, or decrease the likelihood, um, if not avoid altogether making those same mistakes in real life. And I know, um, could you just uh, let us know the stage? Because I know you're super early. So that yes. just to give us context of how to give feedback, like where you're at in your development. Yes, so this is a pre-seed um, venture right now. So it's me, myself, and I, um, founder, wearing all of the hats. I just filed the 83B two days ago. Uh, so learning the ropes very much as I go and currently actually looking for a technical co-founder. There we go, there we go. Uh, great. great. Okay, so I think I'm gonna jump back though quickly to Anna's question before. You're not a nonprofit. No. Right, so who's the customer and like why are they buying when they're buying? Because I get mm -hmm. who the user is and it mm -hmm. makes total sense. I understand the problem but I'm trying to understand who's got the financial incentive to like pay for this now yes. to preempt the problem. Or is it D2C? This would actually be a B2B2C 
play because the idea is that this will become a tool that gets maybe licensed out. I don't know, perhaps a JP Morgan or SVB, um, you know, would be able to help this become a mainstream tool and it would actually be a vetting mechanism, so akin to a driver's license, right? How teenagers cannot legally get behind the wheel until they've been trained. So this would actually train them through that coaching and they would walk out with a CP score that holds weight in real life that then determines their readiness to engage with and potentially take on debt. In, in, the, in the meantime, I mean, that's re it's really aspirational and amazing and I think maybe a large bank would want to talk to you this early to bring, like Aqua Hire, mm -hmm. to bring you in and say, can you do this with under the umbrella mm -hmm. rather than invest? Um, but in the meantime, if you do want to just take it all the way, like with entrepreneurial side of it, um, the first thing that came to my mind is if you made it something where the household, where the parent was getting like the results of the testing that the, the gamified things that the child was doing or the teenager was doing, and that sort of unlocks something for them within the house. Like you get, you know, a certain allowance, but I don't think it should be based on money. But it's it's like, or it's like you have a certain allowance put into a bank account mm -hmm. if you if you do it. Um, I know all of my nieces and nephews would play that if they they would do it if they're like, okay, you get like five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars. Mm -hmm like a week or whatever the thing is, right? If you, because they all have jobs, most of them have jobs, they're like working at, you know, local uh, fast food or right. babysitting or whatever. And it, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of apps out there that are trying to gamify things, and especially um, finan FinTech. And so it's not, it's not something that's like so innovative that it would just kind of disrupt mm -hmm. things. But if you could tie it to what I don't see is like that, that kind of incentivized thing, sure. in, in addition to the gamifying. Because kids are gonna find a way to gamify everything. Everything, yes. Yeah. 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 And I, I, would, I would like to um, add as a corollary, when you're thinking about B2B to C businesses, um, expand your horizons and think more broadly about other types of businesses that can act as distribution channels for you. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Uh, my second startup was a FinTech, and when we were um, going to market and talking to affinity organizations, organizations like the Girl Scouts mm -hmm. were like, we would love a personal financial management tool That's genius. per troop mm -hmm. so that they can learn and That's save genius. and grow together. And so think about how you can um, approach this from all different angles. It could be, you know, Divine Nine, Greek organizations. Sure. It could be any sort of um, affinity, a church even. Um, so B2B to B to C, be a little bit more expansive mm -hmm. so that you can onboard those first users and get your proof points and then go to the banks and say, hey, I have this many users, the app is this sticky, this is what our retention looks like, and then you're in a, a, a better position to raise capital, but also to poten potentially get that aqua hire at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and the second thing I wanna say is that the field is very crowded when it comes to PFM. Sure. Um, so be really thoughtful about what your actual competitive advantage is and what the competitive landscape looks like, because um, it's not gonna be credible to say that you don't have any competitors, Right. So be thoughtful about who your competitors are and who your comparators are, who are a little bit further along than you, that you can demonstrate, you can reach and potentially surpass. Mm -hmm. And talking to as many potential customers and potential users so that you have leverage on both sides saying, this is the data we have on the user and um, the buyer if you're only going B2B to C. That makes uh, sense. I'm obsessed. <laughs> I, 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 think it's, I think it's genius. I actually love it. And you know, I, I also thought about Girl Scouts and badge and getting your badge. Mm. So, oh, badge. It's, it's, it's in the works. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's okay. No, seriously, you should talk to other organizations like that. Maybe even then, I'm happy to make an intro there because yes. um, our app is not gamified in that way. Yes. And so it could be a really interesting add-on. And that also reminds me, I can make an intro to um, Catalina, who's the CEO of a company called Lone Sense. And she's uh, Kaya Wong. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm an there's so many as well. places yep. you could go with. Um, we're yep. so aligned. Like I could read <laughs> your mind right now. Like I'm, I'm so there. I'm just like obsessed. A with your design. Thank you. Like it's edgy. It's it brings me in. I love the name. I love everything about it. I'm like the queen of marketing. Like I'm so obsessed. I'm like <laughs> I have so many ideas for you. And then the other thing, you know, women in financial confidence, mm -hmm. it starts at the age of five. It does. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, getting women 
money's a taboo topic. I don't know why, but it is. So let's, I mean, menopause, periods, money, 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 how many men we sleep with, like all these things, these are taboo <laughs> or topics. Or women. Uh, like, <laughs> women. <laughs> right, like, let's get it out there. Right. And so, you know, even for women, I want to get us all using this so that we can all get comfortable you know, talking about money, 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 money. Let's, like, talk about it. I mean, There's I don't know where Joanne is, money. but, like, we got a show on LinkedIn Live talking about money. Like, let's talk about money. Like, these are really fun ways of doing it. And AI, by the way, mm -hmm. like, getting all of us, it'll start learning how to put us in there the way we want to talk about it. So I think there's a million things that we can do with this at every age. I'm 61. I could play this game. I want to play a game. Mm. Like, let's have fun playing games and talking about money. Here we can all it. talk about yeah. it. So I like it. And we should talk about aging it down, aging it up, aging it all around. I think there's a lot of applications for this. Lots of applications. Thank you. All right, we do have to wrap. It sounds like really great connections and intros from the panel. Um, and I just want to remind everyone, on your sheet, there's a QR code with all the information from the presenters. So I highly encourage, if anything came to mind, if any person, organization, idea, please email our presenters, contribute to that dolphin feedback. Um, but last question. So who would take the first meeting? <laughs> and who would invest right now? Okay, look at that. All right, thank you so thank much. Thank you all. Yeah. This is great. So before, before we head out, I just want to again say thank you again, FQ, for hosting us. But we have both Springboard's CEO and chairwoman and co-founder in our audience today. And I just want to say Springboard's been around for 25 years. Um, many, many thanks to Kay, who's been with, their, or with us. Springboard. Yeah. Yes. Please, please. Okay. I want to tell you something. Women are not raising 2% of the venture capital. They're raising 20%. Women founders and co-founders are raising over 20%. And we should not put ourselves in a little side funding opportunity say, we're underfunded. We only raise 2%. And that's been going on for 24 years that I've been doing this, and I'm tired of it. I'm not, yeah. I won't stand for it anymore. We raised 20%, and that's what we'd be talking about. We gotta talk about what women founders and co-founders together are doing. We're a much bigger part of the market, and it's about time we told people about it. So that's my word for let's today. Let's go, let's go, woo! Amazing. Um, so thank you again, Kay, Natalie Buford as well, here um, with Springboard. Um, leading the organization into just so much more success and growth um, for years to come. So please talk with them, talk with all of us about Springboard FQ. Thank you to our amazing panel. Um, I hope you all continue to be dolphins, continue to support each other, show up for each other, and keep kicking ass. <laughs>